Took care of special things Oh, it's a nice tonight She gonna be taking it downtown Yeah, the woman's looking good
Hello. Oh my God, look at you people. Look at this. What a crowd. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. I'm pinching myself right now because I started in January with the National Main Street Center and I never thought in my life that I'd be up here. So thank you, Patrice Frey. This is awesome. Thank you. We are so excited to have all of you here. And I just want you to know this room is set for 900 and it's almost full. So you've broken a record, let me tell you. This conference, just so you know, our final count was 1,405 attendees. Is that exciting? Says a lot for Detroit and Michigan. That's all I have to say. So I'm really happy you're here because you passed the test. We put you in the circular maze and you made it to the closing session. Give yourselves a round of applause. We do have one last test for you. Yes, there's one more. And that is to get to the big bash tonight. We are so excited to be heading to the Eastern Market. Tickets are still available if you're feeling the love in this room tonight and you didn't buy a ticket. We'd like to see you there. Now remember, the big bash starts at 6.30, but here's the key. Don't even come down to the motor lobby until 6.15 6 because that's when the shuttles start to run. So don't get there any earlier. 6.15 is the perfect time. We're going to have light dinner, cra Michigan craft brews, wine, and live music tonight. So what a great conference this has been. It's, been, it's a great time right now to reflect back on those fantastic sessions you attended, that awesome event at Campus Martius, or the new connect connections you have made. With all, with all that in mind, though, we want to remind you that you will be getting a follow-up email from us with a survey about the, the whole conference experience. And you all know that using the mobile app, you can evaluate sessions per the mobile app, app as well. So, it really gives me great pleasure at this time to introduce you to one of the most passionate people I know when it comes to downtown revitalization, and her name is Patrice Fry, our president and CEO. Let's give her a big, warm welcome. a moment and talk about how fabulous Carolyn Delutri is. <laughs> so what you may not know, what all of you may not know, is that Carolyn worked with my husband in uh, Evanston, where she was the downtown director, and my husband's the city manager, and I stole her because I knew that Main Street really needed her. Main Street really needed her. So we are so lucky to have you, and thank you for all you have done to help make this a wonderful conference. So. I have to say, you know, I've been to a lot of conferences, lots and lots of conferences, and, and then there's nothing, nothing like a Main Street conference. The energy, the enthusiasm, it's really something special. So I think you all deserve to you know, give yourselves a round of applause for making Detroit so wonderful. All right, I wanted to recognize our wonderful chair, Barbara Sidway, for all of the work she has done along with the Main Street Board the last year to get us here, to Mary Thompson, our other board member who, who is here as well from Washington State, and for everyone else who, who couldn't make it this evening. Um, and I also wanted to say a special thanks to Michigan, the, the uh, Mishta folks in particular. Uh, first to Gary Heidel, who is the Chief Placemaking Officer at Mishta, who I think has the absolute coolest title. And so one day I, I aspire to that title. I think it's just the best. Uh, to Scott Woosley, who couldn't be here this afternoon, but is the Executive Director at Mishta. We owe him his, our, our thanks as well. 
but also to two people who at this point really don't need any introduction, and that's Joe Borgstrom and Laura Krizov. And if you would, if you would all stand. <laughs> Gary, you should you gotta come along up here as well. We at the National Main Street Center wanted to provide you with, with uh, a symbol of our gratitude for all that you have done during the last year for our many, many conference calls for preparing this, this event. Joe was telling me how sad he is not to talk to me every Monday at 3 o'clock. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Billy, get ready for that. Monday at 3 o'clock. Eastern time, so in recognition and appreci appreciation of your fresh ideas, hard work, determination, and commitment to the National Main Streets Conference, we really honor you and thank you. And it's been such a pleasure to work with all of you. Thank you very much. One last quick thing, I just wanted to give a shout out to Main Street staff before I live, uh, leave the, the stage. I just want to acknowledge each and every one of you. So Carolyn, who we've already talked about, Deb Wise, who has been with Main Street for such a long time and, and does such a wonderful job of welcoming people at uh, registration, Norma Meese, Kathy LaPlante, Rachel, uh, Rachel Bowden for her communication work, Hannah for all of her work on membership, and, and Steve Amarin also for your work on membership, Jody Leffring, uh, uh, Tally Jameer, and Lindsay for Lindsay Wallace, our latest edition. So thanks so much, all of you, and we're gonna have a fun drive back to Chicago tomorrow. <laughs>I asked for a couple minutes up here too, and in, in the immortal words of uh, Adam Sandler, I have a microphone and you don't. Uh, I do want to make sure that, uh, I, I do want to say thank you very much to Patrice and to Valicia and uh, the entire staff, Carolyn. Uh, you guys have been absolutely a, a pleasure and an honor to work with over this past year. Um, it's funny because you know, my name specifically has been called out a couple of times over the last couple of days and I sheepishly stand up because I know that there was a, uh, there was a number of people on this team who worked a hell of a lot harder than I did. And I want to make sure I recognize them right now. First and foremost is Laura Krizov, our Main Street Manager, you all know. But I would like, uh, I'd like my staff to stand up. So uh, Jesse Lawrence, Brittany Hoskew, uh, Kelly Larson, who is not technically my staff, but uh, she tells me off just like they do. So go ahead and go. Uh, Emily Pantera, Linda Best, Lori LaPerrier, uh, Vanessa McDonald, and Peter Hughes. If you guys are in the room, please stand up. I want to thank uh, Gary and Scott, who uh, about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, uh, we, we came to you guys with this crazy idea that, hey, we should probably hold the conference in Detroit because we know that there's a hell of a lot going on here and the rest of the world needs to know about it. So we thank you for, for doing that, Gary and Scott. Uh, I want to thank all the Mishta staff. We had quite a few Mishta staff who were here. Uh, we had folks who volunteered. We had all the committees. If you served on a committee or a volunteer for this event, will you please stand up? I want to make sure you get recognized as well. Please, everyone, everyone in the yellow shirts, all the committee chairs. I know, uh, you know, none, you, anybody who's put on a, a conference of any size knows that this can't get done with an army without an army of volunteers and committees. So I really appreciate everyone who put all the time and effort into this. Uh, I want to thank our major sponsors. Uh, I know that Carolyn's got the official list and it's, it's scrolling, but I really want to point out uh, not only Mischa, but our friends over at the Michigan Economic Development Corporation for uh, coming to the table right away to be able to help us put this on. Uh, the folks over at Quicken and our friends at Main Street, Oakland County, uh, who've been with us every step of the way. So I want to give them a round of applause. So when we, want, when we started to do this, we, we started with a pretty simple premise. Uh, we wanted Detroit to be the, the conference standard that the next 10 conferences are held to. And, you know, at the end of the day, we wanted everyone to leave here with a positive feeling about Detroit and what the things that are going on here, not just in Detroit and Metro Detroit and Michigan as a whole. 
And I want to read some words from my friend Bob Wilson. Uh, is Bob still here? Did he take off? Where's Mr. He's, he's at the bar. That's. I will join him in about 45 seconds. Uh, but he wrote this last night on Facebook, and this was completely unprompted, and I want to share this with you guys. Um, he, and he says, he gives thanks to a lot of folks, and he says he's, uh, that he's been to a lot of cool places. He says, I've never been to a cooler place than Detroit. This place is a testament to what can happen when the world turns their head, gives up, buys in on a negative perception, and eventually yields to creativity, entrepreneurialism, and vision. Rock on, Detroit. <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank each and every one of you who made the trip. Some of it was a short trip, others it was much longer. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to my Canadian friends. We're the Canadians. Thank you. I know we had folks as far away as Saskatchewan come on on over, so we appreciate you enjoying the balmy weather here in Detroit. But again, thank you. Each and every one of you, I'm sure, when you first heard the, the conference was going to be held in Detroit, thought, oh man, do I really want to go to Detroit? And at the end of the day, when you leave here, I hope your thought was, hell yeah, I got to go to Detroit. <laughs> so with that, I've taken up way too much time, but I want to say thank you guys all again very much. And uh, we'll see you in, where are we going next? Alrighty. Well, as you as Main Streeters all know, we can't do this work and have a conference like this without the help of our sponsors. So I do just want to run through our sponsors one more time. Uh, the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, Quicken Loans, St Strategic Staffing Solutions, Michigan Downtown Association, National Trust Community Investment Corporation, the National Park Service, Illich Holding Inc., Zipcap, DTE Energy Foundation, Main Street, Oakland County, <laughs> DPN, Arnett Muldrow and Associates, Quinn Evans Architects, National Trust Insurance Services, Beckett and Reader, Compuware, M Michigan Municipal League, Britain Studios. How about those bags? Prior Life? <laughs> Did you like the bags? Very cool. Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, Detroit Riverfront Conservancy, Downtown Detroit Partnership, Under the Radar Michigan, Community Economic Development Association of Michigan, and DHive. Again, a big round of applause. <laughs> There's also one person we want to recognize um, because it it was really uh, the help of Alicia Crisofoli, who helped us through this transition period and helped with putting together all the, the sessions and all of you that sent in things. She coordinated everything. And Felicia, we just want to say thank you very much. <laughs> now, on with the show. So, have you ever heard of spoken word? You have, okay. Well, spoken word is a performance artistic poem that is word basic. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you from downtown Detroit and Cass Technical High School, who's this young man, 18 years old, Matt Webb. <laughs> Thanks, Carolyn. Again, like she said, my name is Matthew Webb. I'm an 18-year-old senior at Cass Technical High School, CT. Um, and spoken word to me is something that's very powerful. It gives me um, great pleasure that you guys joined us here in Detroit. I hear you guys had some very fun and interesting experiences. And I just hope that this piece that I'm sharing with you opens up your eyes to what Detroit can be and already is. Watch me while I walk, and listen to me while I speak. 
You will never hear me saying words that confine me to the stereotypical black human being. You'll never see me walking with my pants below my ass, saying, yo, what up, my nigga, to the next black brother that pass. You'll never hear me bragging about sex before marriage because I have respect, not only for myself, but for my heritage. Now, you might be saying, why are you trying to preach? You're only 18 years old, but I'm not. I'm just telling you the truth the way it's never been told. Listen to me while I speak and watch me while I walk. Notice how I put stress on the things that you've already been taught. I hope the words that I'm saying challenge you subliminally, not only mentally and physically, but spiritually. I hope they cause you to understand a new side of me, the new side that wants to spark a change in today's society. Watch me while I walk and listen to me while I speak. I just told the truth like Dr. Seuss instead of giving some speech, so now you know. I hope you go and show them how you walk. You all have a head start, a chance to think smart. I'm glad that we had this talk. Matthew, that was beautiful. Just wonderful. Wow. Well, next, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our keynote speaker. Tom Dalden is an Emmy. <laughs> you had me laughing earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tom Dalden is an Emmy Award-winning producer, actor, and writer, and the host of the Emmy Award-winning PBS show, Under the Radar, here in Michigan, which features the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to be. Please join me with a warm Main Street welcome to Tom Dalden and co-creator Jim Edelman. On. Um, before we get started, try not to all scream at once, but they want me to inform you that at the Big Bash later, they will be serving alcohol. <laughs> Go ahead. That's all you got? That's it. The rest is on me now. Typical of a producer to have to fill the rest of the half hour. Yeah. Uh, I'm Tom Dalton. This is Jim Edelman. We are co-creators of Under the Radar Michigan, which... Uh, it's just about, it's, it's, it ain't rocket science. It's about the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan such a great place to live, work, have a business, and play. So um, we've been on the air for, oh, what, three and a half years now? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're in season four right now. Right. And if you're wondering, <laughs> if you're not from uh, the, the Midwest, you're wondering what uh, Under the Radar Michigan is, should we show them a... Uh... We should. We can do that. Um, you can trigger my uh, iPad. There you go, guys. So basically the show is, you know, we drive into cities, we, we look around, we point our cameras at stuff, and we, uh, we make pretty pictures out of it. And uh, this is a, just a quick little preview of what you'll find uh, from under the radar in Michigan. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar in Michigan. You know, when we set out to produce a show all about Michigan, a lot of people thought we were crazy. They thought we'd run out of great stories to tell. But truth is, we're in our third season, and we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Did you know that Michigan was the number one producer of blueberries in the whole U.S.? No, I didn't know that. Not at all. Really? You guys live in Michigan? Yeah. Yeah? Are you sure? Yeah. I think so. Did you know that uh, Michigan is at the forefront of green technology? No, I wasn't aware of that. Did you know that there's a fish sandwich festival in Bayport, Michigan? I did not know that. I was just wondering if you knew the surface temperature of the planet Mercury. No. That wasn't really one of the questions, but I thought I'd ask it anyway. <laughs> 
Want to see some of the cool people, places, and things we're discovering? Come on, I'll show you. He's running my line. Oh, yeah. Hello, officer. If you don't know where we are by now, shame on you. We found that there's so much in Michigan to explore and so much we don't know about, it's mind-boggling. Come on, guys, let's eat. <laughs> now I need some strudel and a big pretzel, yeah. We're traveling to every Michigan city, uncovering tons of Michigan stories and finding more inspired people doing great things every day. Michigan really is one of the best places to live on the planet. And boy, do we have fun finding that out. Piece of cake. You have to remove your sweater. I can't take it off. Oh, it's too tight. <laughs> this will be easy. Ah, mommy! Oh boy. Okay, that's good. Believe it or not, there's a ton of people out there that love this show. They're not even related to me. I'm finding things about Michigan that I never knew. And you make it so exciting. It takes us to places yeah. we've never been before. So you watch our show? Yeah. You like the restaurant part? I do. Right, because you like to eat, right? Yeah. What I like about it is that a lot of times you find things that you might not necessarily come across if you were a visitor. But you're even cuter than you are on TV. Stop it. I can't believe it. I'm actually talking to you. Well, well, I'm actually talking to you. Santa, you got to know that the guy from Under the Radar is here today, okay? Oh, 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 oh. I, I've seen his show. I love it. Oh, it's a wonderful show. Okay? Be sure to fill his stocking nice and full. Of yes. Even kids like BTR. Who wants ice cream? <coughs> My kids, whitefish. <laughs> Can someone please get me a jelly donut? Great donut queen. Will you please show me how to frost these donuts? Hi, you know, a wise man once said that Michigan is the most incredible place to live in the universe. Actually, I said that, but it sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Under the Radar Michigan, you can't not watch it. Does that make sense? So that's, that's four years of, uh, of show condensed into four minutes. It, uh, it does fly, and I'm sure all the, uh, the Michigan Main Streets that were featured in that segment were kind of charting off all your... Uh, your airtime there. Yeah, it's funny. When we first started doing the program um, three and a half years ago, uh, a friend of mine said, you're going to do a show just about Michigan. What are you going to do after the first season? But as you can see, there are so many incredible people, places, and things actually in all of your towns that are just waiting to be discovered. And our job is really, when we go into a town, is first to find out what the town's personality is, to get into, dig into their main street, um, and to find out what makes that town tick and what makes it unusual and special and unique. Um, and actually, it's not that hard. No, I mean, we're all, you know, we're, we're all like mini travel agents to our towns. You know, when, when people come in from out of town, we want to show them these gems that are around, around town. We just do that on a little bigger scale. Um, you know, I think one of the things that, um, that we've talked about over time is, is the laundry, you know, the laundromat. Up in uh, up in Fenton. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, this is a little a little restaurant that Tom's been beating on us to, to feature for since the show started. Yeah, it's a little restaurant called in a little teeny town called Fenton. Anybody here from Fenton? Okay, it's a great little town. There's a restaurant there called the Laundry, one of the most incredible places I've ever eaten in my life. And unless you dig down and find these hidden gems, you're really not going to know that they exist. And they exist in all of your towns. It's just a matter of finding them. Um, and, and screaming to everybody about them. Um, it, a lot of times when we go to towns, they, they'll want us to feature the, their, their lighthouse or the, the museum, things like that. They're all very nice. Yeah, and they're all wonderful <laughs> things, but if you really want to discover, if you really want people to come to your town and discover, we discovered actually early in the first season that food is the single biggest trigger for human beings. You tell somebody about, it's true, you tell somebody about a, a can I say kick ass? <coughs> right. You mean again? You, you mean tell again? somebody about a great <laughs> restaurant, and they will they will drive 200 miles to your town, and then when they get there, they'll they'll discover your town. But nothing makes people. Jim and I once drove 150 miles to go to Joe's Gizzard City. Um, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Where they they serve fried gizzards and seven dipping sauces, which turned out to be ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, salt and pepper, vinegar, salt and pepper. Yeah. So. But so I usually tell CVB people, Chamber of Commerce people, mayors, when I talk to somebody from a town that we're trying to explore and discover and we're going to feature, 
tell me about your best restaurant. They will get people to drive tremendous distances to visit your town. Then they'll discover it when they're there. And we're still hearing from restaurants that we featured in season one that they're getting traffic from shows that are we running yeah. or people are watching online. It's the power of, of this television show. It's the power of Tom as a host. Um, that drives people to want to explore in our footprint, uh, in our footsteps. I think, you know, we've got this audience that is part travel, part um, small business, right. part real estate. You know, they, people want to explore where we've been. They want to live there. I think one of the best compliments, you tell the story great about uh, how people are always telling us thank you. Oh, people usually say the nicest compliment we get is people tell us that your show doesn't make me want to visit these towns. It makes me want to live in that town. Um, I think that's because, A, we don't take ourselves very seriously. B, I'm not smart enough to lie. <laughs> and, uh, no, it, it's, I think it's because, I mean, campaigns are nice, slogans are nice. What we do is we go into a town, we find these little hidden gems, we find the personalities and the people who love these towns, and we let them tell the story. Um, and that's so much more impactful to people. If you can get a, a personal connection with people to your town, that's what we're trying to do is get, a, get people to see this place and feel a personal connection to that town, and that's gonna get them to come. And that's gonna get them to come visit your place, as opposed to, you know, we got great parks, we got a nice dive, we got a boathouse, we got a library. We all have that, but you find the little hidden gems that not everybody knows, that you could hang your hat on, because every town's different. I'm from Rochester, Michigan. <laughs> and in Rochester, our philosophy is this is where you live. This is where you wanna live, where you wanna raise a family, it's, it's still hip enough, so when you, know, you get a babysitter, it's cool to go out and all that, but it's still, it's the place you want to live. Um, and that just defines who we are. Uh, we also have some great restaurants, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's placemaking 101. I mean, you guys have, you know, I think when we started the, se the series, yeah. placemaking was just a, a very small word. Uh, in fact, I remember hearing some people up in Lansing calling it place setting. So, you know, yeah, was, that's yes. how early that was. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, not in the Mishta office that was over in the Capitol. Um, but uh, you know, I think it's, it's definitely it's blossomed into this into this movement into this uh, into this understanding that when we say place making, you know what we mean. When we play play, play uh, say place setting, setting, you know what we mean too. Yeah. You saw the joke it's, coming. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> when we started doing the show, everybody just assumed as soon as my my ugly puss was on TV that well he's an expert about Michigan. I'm like, wait a minute, no, we just started the show. <laughs> you got to give me a few months, but. Um, now we've actually become quite the experts on what a sense of place is and what gives a town a sense of place and what gives a town its feng shui and what, what gives it its personality and makes it tick and what makes people want to live there and raise a family there and have a business there. Um, so yeah, we've actually, you know, we'll come to your town. You know, we'll <laughs> let you know what it's, what's so special about it. Unless and, you want us to come. And we've got another video, but it seems to be frozen up here. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I have to fill time? No, yeah, just fill for a few seconds. Hey, watch this. <laughs> Is that good? Can you see that? I haven't seen that one this before. This actually scares small children. Right, but, we're, uh, we're good now. Oh, okay. okay, that's good, because I, I got a card trick, but I don't have any cards with me. <laughs> so here's another video. You know, on this program, you hear me talk a lot about how communities and neighborhoods have a great sense of place. Now, I'd like to take the time to explain what that means to you, but I'd rather just show you. A lot of it comes from places like this, the Lansing City Market, a place right downtown where people can gather, connect, shop, and share. And if you're looking for local, look no further. You know, the city of Ferndale has won tons of awards for its public spaces, its business development, and its downtown. But it's also a truly enlightened city that's got a huge heart and a ton of personality. Progressive people live, work, and come here every day to enjoy one of the coolest places to eat, shop, and play in Michigan. If you're looking for a sense of place, this is the place to get it. We can all agree that Ann Arbor is one of the coolest cities in Michigan. It's full of innovation, great restaurants, shops, and who could forget the over 40,000 University of Michigan students? College towns are great places to live because of all the energy and ideas universities bring to the community. It provides the diversity, the dynamics, so I love living here. They're also great for the local economy. College kids need places to eat, work, stay, and play. And that adds up to a lot of forward motion for a city. 
it's like a campus and a city in one. So you got like, you know, your regular people and then you got, you know, your campus people too. Ann Arbor is very comfortable. With its classic neighborhoods, it's no wonder it's consistently voted one of the best places to live in the entire U.S. Hey everybody, can you guess where I am? How about now? You're getting warm, but it's not as obvious as you think. Beautiful architecture, great walkable downtown, and get a load of these classic brick streets. Pretty nice. Well, have you figured it out yet? If you don't know where we are by now, shame on you. <laughs> Let me tell you. Wait, what? What? Oh, who framed this shot? The great city of Flint is going through an exciting renaissance, which is why there couldn't be a better time to explore it than right now. Flint just feels right. It's that perfect size, big enough to have that urban feel, yet small enough to cover by foot. Built in 1920 and named after GM founder and Flint native William C. Durant, the Durant Hotel quickly became a symbol of Flint's prominence and success. It was a true Michigan icon. And thanks to Richard Karp and Kevin Prater, it is again. It was the iconic hotel, dignitaries, heads of state, um, prominent uh, people in the auto industry, suppliers who would all come through to be near General Motors. It closed in 72, early 73 around there. Uh, I believe the owners then just gave the building to the city and just sat there, deteriorating with no roof. There was a, several trees growing on the, on the top, um, four or five feet of debris filling the hallways. Multiple fires had been set here by people who were living here, wanting to keep warm. Uh, nearly every bit of valuable scrap metal had been stripped out of the building. It was beat up pretty bad. It was, it was, uh, it was a fixer-upper. What they've done with the Durant is nothing short of spectacular. It's been restored to its original grandeur and sits again as a cornerstone of progress and renewal in Flint. And Richard's group is thoroughly committed to the Durant's important place in Flint's revitalization. We know that, that its continued success is a reflection on our effort, not just, not just completing the construction portion of it, but, but keeping it full, keeping quality tenants in here, um, letting it continue to be a reminder of what is possible in, in Michigan's downtowns. We are gonna start the tour by heading to Campus Marshes Park and Cadillac Square before we hit Cart Plaza, the Riverwalk, the De Quinter Cut, and more. Man, it's great to see Campus Marshes with all the live music and all the people. It's one of the most successful redevelopment projects in recent years, and this past year was number one transformative park in America. All right, so you've probably gathered by now that Jeanette is a guru of all things Detroit. And as if the segues weren't enough, her energy made touring the city serious fun. Eight years I've been downtown, there was no campus marshes before. There were no beautiful streetscapes. The YMCA, the Book right. Cadillac Hotel, right. all of these things, the Cobo they just announced, the Broadheart Tower, all sorts of amazing things being announced and coming to fruition, and it's really an exciting time to be here. Hey, that sounds like something I'd say. So the Riverwalk will eventually be five and a half miles from the Ambassador Bridge all the way to the Belle Isle Bridge. It's beautiful. We have three miles of it completed right now, and it's one of the most popular new developments in the city of Detroit. Sure, we may have looked a little funny, but when we were done, we all had a whole new perspective on the Motor City. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing and Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Yeah, on that show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. I believe I edited that. Actually, I, I, this is where we do have to stop and get a little serious and say thank you to the folks at Mishta because when we first came up with this harebrained idea to do this show, Exploring Michigan, we went to them. Um, I'm going to cry, Gary. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, they saw the value in what we wanted to do, and they helped us get this thing off the ground and taught us what sense of place was and what was so important about main streets and downtowns and it's sunk in, and now it's become our mantra. It's what we do. It's what we're experts at and what we love to do. And, and I think that, that clip kind of explained how we can do some serious stories in there, too. I mean, that, the Durant Hotel story, that, 
that was a big oh wow moment for us. Um, the Rickman House in Kalamazoo is another one of those stories that was a little more difficult for us to tell. It, it, it's a, a, a rehab project that deals with special needs adults uh, and, and giving them housing in, in a city. And that is, those are really special stories beyond just restaurants and, and yeah, the subject matter, it can be whatever, it just, it, you just need to find the gems in your, just make sure you add a restaurant in there. <laughs> Take it from me, restaurants. I used to say to my wife all the time, hi, she's here, hi, hon. Um, why do we have so many restaurants in town? And then it, it finally dawned on me, it's, it's, why do people always congregate in the kitchen of a house? It's food brings people together, it brings people downtown. It makes, it gives, it gives you a reason to connect with people. And that's what it's all about. You should, your downtown should be a place where people can connect, uh, share ideas um, and share their lives. You know, and, and we go well beyond just the show. Our, our social media world is something where um, yeah, we play in a band together too. Oh, there's that too. Um, there's going to be a murder suicide, but it'll be so bad you won't know who did what to who. <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll just walk away. <laughs> it's like, um, but you know, for us, it's that two-way communication that is social media. I'm sure you guys have all found that out in your cities that that when you engage in social media. And, and that conversation kind of flips back and forth as to, um, as to what people like about your towns and, and, and neighborhoods. It, it really becomes special. I think yeah. we found that out on a little bit bigger scale. But, um, you know, you all have a TV show. It's called YouTube. And you can put, you can put some really good videos up that, that kind of tell the story in, in a similar way. Yeah, I, mean, I would totally cha challenge you to do that. Yeah, nowadays it's amazing what you can do with social media. Jim here is a social media He's incredible. Will some months we get a million post views on our Facebook page because he, I don't know how you do it. It's like I magic. It's I don't just, do it. I hear, I hear a poof and then, the, <laughs> but uh, it's amazing. When, even if you can't find two knuckleheads like us <laughs> to do a TV show for you, um, it's amazing what you can do. So I guess our message is to find the hidden treasures, find the personalities, the bigger than life people, the little things that that will compel people to want to live in your town. Uh, because th th that's, we seem to have found that formula because we hear it all the time. Your show makes me want to live there. Well, now I want to live there. Now, oh gosh, now I want to live there. It's oh. schizophrenic. I, you know, but we have, we told hundreds of stories of, of small businesses. So, you know, some that are successful and established, some that are new and, and just trying to figure out how to make payroll. But, you know, the thing that's in common is that they're all in, in towns and they're all, they're all in your backyard. I think that's really what, you know. Yeah, one inspiring story is we had this, because um, I don't know if we're going long. Are we going long? Okay. Um, this we're one is, we're like, okay or we have no time left? What does that mean? <laughs> okay. You notice, how, you notice how I'm clutching Joe's $5 bill, too? Let's go to Plan B. Yeah. Time yeah. to no, this is a little, it's a, uh, <laughs> uh, it's a little family-owned business, a little restaurant called Mia Cam uh, Maria Camitas. Uh, they, they serve fusion um, Asian and uh, Mexican food. Fusion, they combine Mexican and Asian food, and it was, it was magically wonderful. Um, and they were trying to get this little salsa business off the ground on the side. And we were in their kitchen filming, and we looked up on the, on the wall, and there's this sign that said, three feet away. And they're like, I'm like, Joe, what does that, what does that mean, three feet away? And he said, he told me this story about a miner. This guy owned a diamond mine, apparently. And he mined that mine for 20 years straight and never got anything out of it, to the point where he finally said, I give up, I'm done. And he sold the mine. And this is a true story. The next person that took over that mine dug three more feet and hit, oh my God, I mean, this huge vein of diamonds. I mean, it was just incredible. Um, so that was the message to him and his family was, don't give up, keep searching. It's, it could be only three feet away. Don't give up on your dreams. Um, I'm going to cry. It was just, <laughs> it was such an incredible. Well, it did. That story stuck and, with us. And it stuck with us, and it worked because now their salsa business has taken off after them working on it for years. They closed the restaurant. They closed, yeah, <laughs> darn it, because the food was really good. But they closed the restaurant, and now their salsa is all across the Midwest. So it was just that three feet away. I also heard you're three feet away from a spider at any moment, too. So I don't know if that has any, any connection to it. Are you serious? Yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> so. <laughs> So in closing, <laughs> watch out for spiders and look for diamonds. Yeah, yeah look for diamonds, right. <laughs> oh my God, there's a spider in my diamond. <laughs> so anyway, you guys are probably ready to go drink. So I, don't I guess there's still, there's still tickets available yeah. for the Big Bash, I hear. Yeah, there are, there, yes, there are still Which tickets Which will be there too. And they're only five bucks, and I just happen to have five bucks right here if anybody wants a ticket. We're hosting the Dubious Achievement Awards, so don't, uh, don't miss out on those. You'll hear the same jokes again.
Anyway, remember, you all have hidden gems in your towns. Uh, you just got to find them and tell everybody about them as best you can. <laughs> Any questions? Suggestions? Seven o'clock. Dubious. We're doing those as well, so you should drink. <laughs> A lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Here, I want you to have this five dollars. Oh no. Oh my gosh. There. Did you say it? There you go. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Are we done? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you, Tom and Jim. I cannot wait for the Dubious Achievement Awards, right? What a great closing keynote to, to reminisce about Michigan and all the great work they're doing in all the communities across the state and the big city of Detroit. It's just, again, wonderful. Let's give one last round of applause for Michigan, Detroit, Oakland County, all the volunteers. Awesome. Thank you. Well, now we're going to jump ahead. We're going to jump ahead and talk about March 30th, 2015. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our very own Billy Peppers from the state of Georgia. Walk softly and carry a big stick, right? And if they don't like it, beat them over the head with it. It won't cause any trauma. Uh, I do want to take a second to, uh, to ask Carolyn and Patrice and Joe and Laura to come back to the stage. You know, I come from the state of great hospitality, and, uh, and, and Joe's going to tell you where the conference is at next year, um, because we know how hard they worked, so we wanted to make sure they had some really great goodies to snack on tonight. Uh, And if you didn't, I had mine last night. <laughs> uh, if you didn't know, Laura's staff had two or three that were on maternity leave in the last year, two on maternity leave in the last year. She's going to be having a baby this fall. That is a lot of work for them that they did. <laughs> They'll be celebrating just not the same way, right? <laughs> well, let's give them one more hand because they did a wonderful job. <laughs> well, I will tell you that the conference has just been amazing. If, I know I've had a good time. You've had a good time. Uh, there was only one mistake that they made, and that was having the last speaker be a Southern Baptist, giving me a pulpit, a room full of people. <laughs> I am going to take my watch off. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's a good thing I'm a Southern Baptist that drinks, so we'll be okay. <laughs> All right? My dad, the minister, is not here, so that's good. <laughs> On behalf of, uh, of the many people of the great state of Georgia, and particularly our Office of Tourism, I want to share with you just a quick video about Georgia. There's a whole lot going on in that video. <laughs> and tourism has the big budgets in our states, right? We'll try this again. I, 
a hand for Eric, our guy back there who's been running everything tonight. <laughs> He's had to work with Apple products and Dell products and clickers and videos and presentations. So I know that uh, I know that he's doing a good job. While we're waiting on the video, I would just mention that on behalf of Gov Governor Nathan Deal, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, our great commissioner at the Department of Community Affairs, Gretchen Corbin, and one of the best mayors in all of the U.S., Mayor Kasim Reed, the state of Georgia is very excited to welcome you south next year. <laughs> tell you that uh, Main Street is not just a program. It's an initiative. It's a life-breathing system that marries common sense with positive energy. It's a doctrine of success, a laboratory of innovation, an incubator for entrepreneurship, a vessel for preservation, and a vehicle for transformation. It's a generation changer. In 1980, Georgia became a Main Street state. In fact, the program is older than I am, and I'm of a generation that never knows the struggle of downtowns in our state without the Main Street network pushing forward. And our goal as a team, collectively, is for future generations to never know the struggle of downtown. Nationally, not in our communities, but nationally, we live in a society that interacts with their pharmacists through drive-throughs. 
We have a generation that talks through speaker boxes to achieve the instant gratification of all beef patties, some processes, sauces, and wax paper wrappers. The world inspires commerce through the non-personal ordering of goods through electronic means. Daily in suburbia, we see countless neighbors that pull out of their garages before daybreak in the morning, drive miles and miles to work, come back home, park in the garage. They never use their front doors. They never sit in chairs on their front porches. They never interact with neighbors. In this land, we are a team of missionaries doing the good work necessary to pull people from the easy and routine doldrums of daily living in this very convenient and fast environment. We make sure that they understand that relationships are more important than social media likes, that community engagement is a pillar of healthy living, and that true sustainability requires local investment. In my state, main streets are the place where the feet hit the street. We enjoy the diversity and variety found in our 87 nationally accredited main street cities. We use the eight guiding principles to impact and drive change in our mountain cities of North Georgia where the technologies of today are driving people from textile mills into entrepreneurship. We reach down to our coastline to impact the preservation of some of the oldest settlements in our region of the country. From our government centers to our former railroad stops, we work in cities and towns that are uniquely Georgia. We have communities like Rome, Georgia that have been in the program since 1982. And our future's so bright, even our buildings wear shades, right? <laughs> We're recycling the structures of varying purposes of yesterday into the storefronts of success for today and tomorrow. We look at the glass as always half full in Main Street land, and we get a very unique perspective. We celebrate our founding fathers. We turn small lots in our communities into these great places where people can gather and have community activity. We always roll out the red carpet of hospitality in Georgia. We put the twinkle in the eyes of children, creating those childhood memories of their hometowns. We educate our neighbors on sustainability by meeting their needs closer to home. We encourage preservation in real life. We understand that for things to be successful, buildings need people living in them and businesses succeeding in them and not just museums of days of life gone by. So we get the opportunity to raise the curtain on the heart and soul of Georgia when you come to visit. We understand that sometimes buildings need a good strip tease, and in Georgia, old is sexy. <laughs> right? We're my older people in the room. You're sexy. Yeah. But we also know that we need to build quality today so that we can have historic buildings tomorrow. So. We want to invite you to Georgia to come pull up a chair at next year's event and visit with new friends and with old friends. Because when we get together as a Main Street team, and teamwork is the theme for next year, we can soar like eagles across our country. Additionally, I think it's important that we get together and have a toast of that great Georgia champagne And we hope that when you come to Georgia, you'll blaze a new path in your corner of our nation. You see, we invite you to come sit down with some of our long-term managers and hear about our decades of success in our state. Ann Arnold's been here for 29 years, and Connie's been here for 24. They're both here with us today. 
But most importantly, we want to welcome you to a city that's on the move and a state that's on the move. You see, for Georgia since 1980, we've been putting people to work in our Main Street communities. We've been keeping our investments local. We've been steady in our incremental approach. That's one building completed every day of the year in Georgia Main Streets. And we've placed a priority in making our downtowns 24-hour living beings within our communities. And I'm excited about this. We're putting people to work on their dreams. For every business that has closed, we've had five open in the last year in our downtowns. I want to leave you with the excitement that we feel across our state. One of our main street cities, Douglasville, Georgia, produced a video for us uh, that will introduce you to the spirit of exactly what's happening in our downtowns. Now, tourism's great. They do videos statewide. We wanted to show you exactly what's happening in our downtowns. All of the artists in the video are Georgia singers and songwriters, and the three mayors in this video really showcase the fact that Georgia Main Streets are collect, uh, connected with the politics and that we move our program forward through local leadership. We're remembering our roots. We're embracing this culture of renaissance, and we're excited about the revival of the heart and soul of our state. While we bid farewell to Michigan tonight at what I know is going to be a spectacular party where apparently there's alcohol <laughs> and some available tickets left, <laughs> we look forward to the coming together of friends, colleagues, and you are economic developers. March 30th to April 2nd in downtown Atlanta. Until then, please enjoy this short video on Georgia downtowns. Georgia, the whole thing. Just an old sweet song. Georgia on my mind. Georgia on my our historic downtowns are more than beautiful historic buildings and squares. They are our history, and they're the roots upon which our city is built, and it's important that we don't lose that. Historic preservation is important for our citizen and our city. It's about preserving our past, examining it, and learning from it so that we can look at the successes and failures of those who came before us and know how to build a better future for our community. There's a renaissance happening today where cities are embracing new and innovative ideas about what a downtown can be and what some downtowns need to be to survive in our current economy. Hold on to me as we go As we roll down this unfamiliar Towns aren't just historic courthouses and antique shops anymore. Now there are all kinds of venues, like this beautiful Schaefer Center here in Tacoa. Today, we have downtowns in Georgia that are anchored with everything from amphitheaters and entertainment venues to water parks and movie studios. And these cities are thriving. that balance, that balance of preserving the old and our history, but then embracing the new and all that goes with it. And that 
is what will bring revival as our downtowns thrive. Cities grow, counties grow, our regions will grow, and that will take and spread that revival to our great state of Georgia. Are we excited to be going to Atlanta, Georgia? <laughs> All righty. So that concludes our plenary, uh, closing plenary session. And don't forget the motor coaches leave at 6.15 from the motor lobby. We'll see you tonight. Have your dancing shoes on. <laughs>